Hello and welcome to episode 22 of the Sweet Lavender Knits podcast. My name is Christine and I'm coming to you from just outside of Toronto, Ontario in Canada. Thank you very, very much for joining me today on this very gloomy afternoon uh, on October the 28th, 2018. I am, um, you know, a little saddened by the fact of how we're losing daylight and I'm trying very hard to get it done before it gets totally dark. So I have some artificial lightning to help with the situation and hopefully it's not too hard on your eyes. Um, welcome, welcome to this episode. If you are new, welcome and those that are returning, welcome back. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. You can find me on social media on Instagram as sweet underscore lavender one and on Ravelry as sweet lavender one. Um, we also have a lovely Ravelry group and it's called Sweet Lavender Knits. And uh, so come on by, check us out and uh, see if you are up to it. And, uh, you know, if you like what you see, then do join in. Uh, the podcast is mainly about knitting, uh, maybe some sewing and crocheting definitely when and if I fancy them. Uh, thank you so much again for joining me. I think I've said that so many times now, but thank you. Um, and, you know, I'm getting awfully excited because, uh, you know, October is almost done. I'm, I'm not excited about that part of it, but because it's been almost a year since I've been doing this podcast thing and I've really been enjoying it. So thank you. Um, so yes, why don't you grab your needles, something nice to drink and, uh, uh, let's get started. So thank you very much. Once again, I have to thank all of you for your lovely birthday wishes um, and, you know, all the lovely comments that you left me. And uh, as promised, I'll be picking a winner randomly from the comments and uh, it will be my birthday giveaway. I've already done the one on Instagram and uh, announced the winner. And I will. I meant to pick the winner today before I sat down, but everything's been sort of in a rush and I really do want to do this podcast today. So I promise to announce the winner in my next podcast if you will bear with me on that. Uh, that being said, uh, what's going on? It's just been crazy, crazy busy. Um, I say that all the time, don't I? Yes, yeah, sadly, October is ending and uh, it's been a great month all along and uh, you know, now it's gone down to chilly temperatures and, you know, we are in Canada and yesterday we had um, a whole uh, pouring down of flurry, flurries and, uh, you know, for a minute I thought it was going to be snow, you know, as in like settling on the ground, and but it was it, it just uh, went away, which was nice. Um, but yes, it is getting colder. And um, also, my son has now left for university. So that has been a little bittersweet and a little hard over the last uh, week. And um, I have to say, knitting has been my comfort and just being able to be grounded. So uh, I'm very thankful for that. <clears throat> So uh, on that note, I have to apologize. I mentioned an October giveaway. I mentioned a monthly giveaway for October. Uh, and that is just my way of appreciating you and uh, wanting to say thank you and do a monthly giveaway when and uh, if, you know, whenever I is possible for me. And I mentioned that, but I never got around to opening that Ravelry thread. Um, or, or the thread on Ravel on the Ravelry group, and it totally slipped my mind. So I'm sitting here writing up some notes for me to follow on this podcast. So I refer back to the previous um, episodes notes, and I saw it there, and I felt 
I was I felt awful I'm so sorry I totally forgot um, yes there has been a lot on my mind so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it into an October November giveaway and uh, you know I'll just extend it and I'll probably go up until the mid of November just to give everyone time because I know not every one of you will watch the podcast right as it comes out so give you time to um, you know take part in it and so basically what that is is you just go on Ravelry there should be a thread there which I will try to remember and open up today um, and you could add the, you know just answer the prompt which I will get to in just a second um, and uh, yes uh, that will be your entry for a chance to win the you know uh, win win the prize the, the price will be uh, pattern of your choice from Ravelry so queue up those patterns that you like and um, put in your entry um, answering the prompt and that is your chance to win uh, the price so for the prompt I thought long and hard about this I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my previous episode but I am really curious. Uh, it's just um, been a little uh, sentimental to me and, um, you know, things I've, I've been maybe overthinking things just recently with all of that that has been going on around me. And I would really like to know what your knitting story is. I might have mentioned something along those lines of say, said why you would like to knit, uh, why do you knit? And um, yes, I'm gonna keep it very simple to that as to why you knit. Um, and you can be as detailed or as uh, brief as you like. Um, but um, I thought it would be nice, um, you know, when I started off the podcast, that I didn't really want to overload you with a lot of uh, personal stories or anything because I didn't I didn't know how many people would be interested but I think we've come to a point where we are now a group hopefully you feel that way and I feel a little more comfortable in sharing my story and why I knit and just my knitting story and I hope to do that uh, in my uh, episode at the end of November, which would be the one year mark for this uh, podcast, which I'm super excited about just because I never thought it would last this long. And every time, you know, there've been many times where I've stalled and thought, um, you know, is it is it worth it? And I have to keep reminding myself I'm doing it for primarily for me to be part of a knitting group. And thank you for, having made that uh, dream without without sounding very sappy, but uh, making that little dream come true for me. So thank you very much. And so yes, that is the prompt. It's going to be a why do you knit? And uh, you know, you like I said, you can be as detailed as you like. All right, so moving along to what's on the calendar, uh, we have a few things going, but just uh, to mention the highlights, um, we have the Back to School Cal that is going on. It started from the uh, 15th of September and will be ending on December 15th. So you have uh, a lot of time still, like about a month and a half, where you can, um, you can uh, try to uh, pick up a new technique, pick up uh, something that's new to you basically and teach yourself um, uh, something that's new. Just adding uh, something to your repertoire and um, being able to check one more thing off that list of things you'd like to learn. So yes, and for that, Cal, my um, my technique that I am learning is uh, brioche. And I have to say though, over the last two weeks, I haven't touched it. Uh, as much as I love it, it is very time consuming, just, um, and, and I totally need the headspace for it. Uh, I have to, concentrate and get it done but it is slowly 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 growing so i was hoping to you know have this started and uh, hopefully spring but we'll see because i have quite a bit on my plate right now i'm sorry um i just recently got my bangs done and 
I feel like they're always in my way, so I have to keep moving them, sorry. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so that's the one thing. So then, and then the next thing, the other thing that we have going is the Operation Whip Control, and that is just an open thread for you to post um, those long uh, awaited or, or the, the whips that have been on the needles for a long time, and you just want to get those done uh, or list them and get them done and free up those needles to cast more things on. And yes, there have been some recent comments on that. Um, uh, thread as well which is very nice that it is uh, still alive and uh, yeah it, uh, you know we are working through it it's at your own pace so there is no rush to it and in conjunction with that I suggest that if you are working off of those whips that are older than September you can um, actually join in for the knit 1000 grams on Luli's podcast this is no this is not a collaboration or anything it's just just I uh, thought it's so much hand in hand that it, it'll work in your favor if you are part of two cows, right? Um, and uh, yeah, it's something you might want to check out. And yes, moving on, this seems to be um, a little faster pace today. And uh, it's because I want to be able to um, get the editing done and upload the video in a decent time and not have to stay up too late for that. Um, FOs, I sadly don't have any to show you. I should have had two, but it just didn't happen. And uh, one I will talk about uh, in my works in progress. And the other one is sitting right there. And uh, hope I don't want to even show you where I am. It's so close to being done. And I will share that with you when I'm done. If you're curious, it's my Zweig sweater. Um, and uh, yes, so my bedroom, I'm, I'm sitting in my bedroom today, um, has been rearranged, um, well, you know, at my request really, just turned things around a little so that I'm, I'm able to get a little more um, natural light at me when I'm sitting in this chair and I have my shelf um, with my knitting, uh, projects on there and uh, I um, have come to really enjoy sitting in this chair and it's an old chair that was in another room and not being used be just because I wouldn't go as often to, into the room but now since I've brought it into my room and it's getting a lot of use and it's just become a comfy place off of the bed which I really desperately wanted to do and it's easier on my back my neck and and it feels a lot better so yeah that's just an update um, I'm sure you didn't really ask for that but uh yes so i think i don't know i'm i'm hoping to like clean up this a little bit to make it look more uh you know aesthetically pleasing to your eyes but we'll see Th this really is just a dumb space for me to hold all of my projects and you know um the i have some all of the leftover yarn um balls up there and uh, a, a shawl right there that needs to be it's blocked and just the ends need to be woven in and things like that so i, I do need to clean it up a little bit but um yeah I, I didn't want to waste time doing all of that i just wanted to sit down and record this uh podcast and i hope i'm sure you won't mind uh, you'll be fine with it uh, moving on to works in progress um i have uh, three that i want to share with you those are none of the three that I've shown you in the past. And it's because I've been eager to cast um, cast some socks on. So the first one is, uh, how do I do this? Okay, let me start off with the bag. The first one is housed in this project bag that I made um, a while ago. And I really love this fabric and it's one of my... Uh, it's softened up. I have uh, interfacing, but it's sort of like a thinner interfacing. So now it just feels a little quilty and it's nice and uh, it's a zippered bag. And um, in that, I have this lovely yarn. Now I really hope that the yarn um, shows its sparkle because it is gloriously sparkly very very sparkly 
and it is the yarn cake is not looking so good because it's a little too loose um, and uh, yeah sadly my oldest my son who's gone away to university is the one that used to cake up my yarns um, and um, I guess he wasn't feeling it when he did this one so it came out a lot looser um, the yarn is by N Noble Ruby Designs and I've torn the yarn, um, the ball band. Noble Ruby Designs and it's showing up backwards on the screen. So I hope that it flips. I'm not sure. We'll see. And um, the colorway is Backyard Blue Jay and it's by Selma Brown. And uh, Selma has been very nice uh, to offer um me uh yarn um a skein of yarn as a giveaway to one of my viewers um and i think i will do that along with the um anniversary podcast and uh give a, a one of her yarns away which is really nice i i love her yarn it's really nice this is a three ply fingering uh superwash merino 75 percent nylon 20 20 percent and silver stellina five percent it's 100 grams 437 yards so i am making the evergreen socks by madeline ganon and gannon Madeline Gannon and uh, it is here it is the Christmas trees are done there are four of them and I put in scrap yarn for the uh, heel and now I am knitting the, the foot of it so the reason I did that is because uh, the scrap yarn that is is because I could not decide on the contrast color to use for the heels uh, my first choice would be uh, a cream or, or natural or a white, not white, but more like a cream. Um, but then it's not very practical because the heels are the ones that get worn the most and they might get dirty fast too. This is a pair of socks can't say that out loud because she can probably hear me but it's for my daughter and I'm hoping to make it for her for Christmas so it's part of the stranded uh, podcast Amy uh, from stranded podcast her festive sock along and this is going to be one of my entries and I hope to have it done by the end of November I think that's when the pod the, the sock along ends if not, I better get knitting faster. <laughs> but uh, yes, that is one of them. And this is my first um, sock and I have yet to go on to the next. So that is the first. And oh, I am not using this right now. But when I made this um, bag, I also made a matching um, DPN holder. So I don't, I'm not using using dpns for this project but uh yeah they were easy to make and i used the same contrast fabric on the inside lined it up on the inside and um yeah that was a fun and it was a while ago <laughs> but it was fun i i remember having fun making sets like that so that is the first work in progress i think i've said everything about that sock and um the second is um it, this was my birthday cast on so i just um i am have usually over the last few years um i tend to be very uh quiet about my birthday just because it was very um it was a little hard on me because um, I had lost my best friend and uh, it was usually around my birthday that I would feel it the most um, her her loss I, I would feel her loss the most just because uh, she always made such a big fuss about my birthday so over the last few years I've just tried to um, minimize 
um, you know, any kind of celebration and, and just keep it on the quiet as much as I could, even though my family would try and do things for me. Um, but then this year with the podcast, and I really did want to share it with you and uh, be able to give um, give give something back uh, on that occasion and do, do the giveaways. So I had to, to talk about my birthday. So um, I thought I would change things around uh, just uh, for myself and um, make it a uh, a nice day or, or something that I can remember in a nice way um, you know and it has nothing to do with the fact that we you know I know some people feel sad around their birthday because they're growing older but it's not like that but uh, it yeah it's it's just um, I, I really wanted to change that outlook on it uh, for myself and so I thought I would um, do a birthday cast on this year and so I picked the yarn that I thought was the most, you know, the, the, the one I really, really wanted to knit up. And that was um, this yarn here, if I can grab the tag. Um, well, it's a good thing I wrote it down because I don't know where I put the tag. It's by Timber Yarns and it's in the Log House Cabin. So um, I showed this yarn to you when I got it from uh, the... Uh, Kitchener Waterloo Knitters Fair that I went to um, just last month and um, it was a lovely yarn that was wound up like one of those gob stoppers uh, I'm not sure how how do you call it but what it was essentially were two two strands of yarn uh, wound up together so you could uh, knit them as two at a time I tried knitting them to it, uh, not two at a time, but I had two separate needles, or actually I did try two at a time. That was crazy. So then I took them off, put them onto two different needles, and um, it still wasn't working with the yarn coming out of the same ball. So I just ended up unwinding the whole thing and just skating, you know, just rolling it up by hand really. And now I have two yarn balls and I'm just doing them one at a time con or, and, you know, because I can't find another pair of needles. I don't know where my needles are gone or, or the ones I'm looking for actually. And so I've cast on. So I've essentially cast on this sock. I had knit up about um, two inches or so, two and a half inches, and then I ripped it out because I really wanted to do contrast heels this time. It's something that I've not tried before. I wasn't very keen on it just because I, th I was thinking about the look and not knowing if I would like it, but more and more now it's grown on me. And I wanted to do that this time so that's what I did this contrast yarn is from the backyard chicken collection of the Hugh Loco um, uh, yarn dyer I'm sorry I forgot her name uh, but yeah and it was uh, there were two minis and one skein of yarn which I knit for my son uh, with one of the minis and this is the other mini so this is it's like a it's showing off as a gray but it's more towards a dark blue and it's not a very bright blue it's just uh, more uh, duller it has a gray undertone to it uh, a blue and then it starts off on this yarn so I have very little to show you but I did enjoy casting on and I used um, I used the Chinese waitress cast on which I am have been using for all of my socks recently and I love it. This was uh, suggested to me, the cast on by Patricia, who's one of my viewers. And so thank you very much, Patricia, for that because I love the cast on. Now I don't have to refer to um, the YouTube video and how to do it. It just comes naturally. It takes a little longer, but it's totally worth it because I love that finished look on the top. It's not so clear with this, this yarn, but it is very, very neat and it has a nice finish to the top. So I like it. And uh, yes, I've just started that. And then um, 
this is just purely for my, you know, my pleasure, <laughs> my joy. And so there was no rush to it. Whereas the evergreen socks, I do have a deadline for it. So um, this got put off in the back burner for just a bit. And I am desperately trying to get this guy done so that I can continue on with the things I would like to do. So that is my second uh, work in progress. I think I've talked a long time about that. And my third one is another sort of sad story uh, in the sense that, oh, I just dropped the yarn. Okay. I don't even have a project bag for this, um, for this project. <laughs> but here it is. This is a little sweater that I'm making for my niece. And I am in no hurry to give it to her, but it will probably be for Christmas um, if she doesn't outgrow it. I have to see how, how big she's getting and if I will have to finish it off. But basically, it was a done FO. And I, then I had to just rip out this um, button band because I didn't like the cast off that I did. I did a tubular cast off and the tubular cast off takes time, but it has a nice look to it usually. But I think it was just the thickness of this yarn uh, and it's a little thicker. This, the pink yarn I'm using is a little thicker than the blue here. I have no names for these yarns right now, but uh, I will probably put that up on the screen if I can. Uh, the pink yarn is just some scrap yarn that I have uh, left over from a baby blanket I did a long time ago, but I, I like the color. It's, it's like a muted uh, pink. And I did this motif of a little daisy um by it's like hand embroidery kind of thing and it was really easy uh i did that and i finished the button band with buttonholes and everything and i just didn't like the look of it so i ripped out the whole thing and i started again this time no button bands i'm sorry no buttonholes and i thought i would just do the normal cast off but even with this cast off, if you can see, I'm not sure if you can see that, but it's sort of pulling in and it's not laying flat. I would like it to be like flat, flush against the edge here so it doesn't look like it's being sucked in or uh, tight, too tight. I was trying to do it looser just so that it would sit better, but I'm not convinced that this is the right uh, bind off for this um, this kind of a situation <laughs> for lack of a better word um, so yes if you have any suggestions on how I can improve on this please let me know because um, I don't want to have to do the cast off and then you know the bind off and then take it out again so uh, I'll probably wait a little to see Oh, what some of you have to say but I really am reaching out to you for any suggestions and if you can tell me uh, of another bind off that I could try um, to just have it lay flat and not um, frill up um, that's what the surprisingly that's what the tubular cast off did I, I when I did that it started to um, what's the word I want to say frill up like it caused little waves on the edge and it just did not look nice at all and what I have you're probably wondering why I didn't put the button holes there it's because I thought I would just use ribbon and l let it be tied up like that with a little bow and I thought that'll be a nicer feature and it'll be cuter you know um, instead of the buttons because then um, I'd have to worry about, uh, which I did go and get the, you know, get some buttons, but, um, I just, I think this will be nicer. The ribbons will be nicer. So that's just my third work in progress. So yes, please do let me know if you have any ideas on what the cast off or the bind off is that I could use. That'll be a little, you know, I, I, I do want a clean edge, but I don't want it flaying. If, yeah, if that makes sense. I'm using the longest cord ever. <laughs> it doesn't need such a big cord, but it's a 60 centimeter or 60 
inch 60 inch cord and that's just because I that's what I have lying around and these are 4.5 millimeter needles and this is from my nickel plated um, set uh, which I enjoy using it's just the cords are the cord is way too long all right so that is that and then um, moving on to acquisitions and uh, yes with my birthday I did have a few things that came in and uh, one was a very nice surprise I will just share about two things from you with you uh, one uh, was a very nice surprise it was a a gift of yarn from one of my friends at work. She knits and crochets as well. Um, however, not as much as uh, she would like to and we don't get any knitting time together. We used to knit during lunch uh, just a bit, uh, but um, now her projects are quite diff different from mine and um, but we do share that, which is nice that we that there is one other person who would share um, my love for fibers and craft and you know things like that. So this is a yarn that she's uh, gifted me. It's got lovely, lovely lavender speckling um, all through, and you can see that it's lovely. And the yarn is by Log House um, Cottage Yarns, and it is on their squishy socks sock eight ply which is extra fine merino nylon 80 20 and it is uh i don't see a colorway maybe i'd have to go and check it out on their website or something which uh yeah but it's it's really nice yarn it's squishy yarn and i am holding off um to probably use this in a project that i have in mind i'll share with uh, share it with you at that point so that's the first thing and then the second thing is an order that I made uh, when I wanted to join the um, festive sock along um, and that is to get some Christmas themed sock yarn and uh, lovely Ellie from Craft House Magic um, had uh, this set on her website that I got it's the Jingle Bell Rock and it's 425 meters in 100 grams of 75% superwash merino and 25% nylon. And uh, it comes with that little mini skein as well as this little um, candy cane and uh, jingle bell, which was really, really nice. I'm looking forward to caking this up and starting on this sock as well. The reason I have these socks going on, first of all, I do enjoy knitting socks. Um, oh, it came with this lovely sachet of lavender. Thank you so much, Ellie. The parcel smelled so fragrant, even before I opened it and I, I was like excited because, uh, you know, I love lavender. And uh, these little sweets that I don't know how they lasted this long. I think I might have forgotten with all of the things that are going on around me, but I doubt they will last to tonight, but we'll see. Uh, yes, so it is a lovely thing. So I'm going to be knitting, starting um, casting on this as well. And I can't wait to, you know, use the progress keeper, uh, you know, having a jingle jingle um, while I'm knitting on the socks. I really am looking forward to that. So that's the other thing. And then the, the other um package that arrived in my mail this I was aware of and when it did get in it was just um, I actually uh, didn't look at it for a couple of days just because I wanted to take the time and go through it it is the making magazine and this is volume number six and uh, it is themed black and white. It is such a beautiful magazine. Can you see that cover? It's just beautiful. I love the artwork on it. I think it could be like framed or something. It's really, really nice. And it has lovely patterns in it. And I am in love with this bag design. Actually, a lot of lovely things. So let me just show you something here. This is called the Modern Boro Zipper Pouch. I would like to try that. Um, then this is what I really want to try. And it is called the Japanese Style 
a linen tote. And I really want to make one of those because I have a, a large project bag, but I don't have any sweater sized bags. So when I work on my sweaters, like this week, I usually just have the project sitting outside rather than in a bag um, because it's I don't have a project bag that's big enough to fit my sweater. So I am really looking forward to that. Um, another one that I like, uh, there are a few things in here. Now the making magazine is not just knit knitting it's actually sewing all kinds of craft and there's also a recipe for uh, a drink or a dessert or something in there always so it's really nice um there was another scarf that i liked oh even this bag actually i i didn't see this before but this would be a really nice tote and it's called the making bag so yeah definitely something to try uh i I know that there was a knitting pattern that I wanted to try and I told myself I, I, I think I would like to try that. It's this one here. It's a lovely yoked sweater and it's called Tree Light by Jennifer Steinglass. It's beautiful. It's really nice. And I can see myself making the sweater in those colors uh, or maybe another color, but yeah. And this um, this shawl as well. It's a lovely shawl called Quill, I believe. Yeah, Quill by Vera Valamaki. So it's really, really nice. Yes, yeah, so I have to say, I think by far this is the um, best um, volume of making so far. I like the first one. Uh, the other ones were kind of okay, you know, the not as good as the first one for me. And then this one just blew everything out of the water. This is a fantastic magazine that I can just spend time looking at. So yes, it is a really nice magazine. So yes, that is it. And then the last thing is I, um, for this, I'm just excited because I I feel totally honored that one of my viewers is working on her very first uh, pattern that she would like to release, and she has asked me to test knit um, for her, and so I'll be casting on that as well this week, and uh, I look forward to that because this is going to be such a great experience for me, a great distraction from everything that's been happening around me, and you know, just be able to focus on um, something and and work towards um, work towards a goal which is uh, something I also like to do um, the uh, and I and I totally look forward to that uh, I think there's been a shift in my mind and how I approach things and uh, sometimes I like to just um, escape with my knitting but sometimes I like it to be purposeful uh, and I'm sure all of you feel like that too with your projects and uh, so this testnet will definitely be a purposeful project uh, I've also been uh, you know browsing Ravelry on my um, times when I've just not been able to focus on my knitting so much and um, I've picked up two patterns. Uh, well, one was handed into my mailbox for me. It's part of the Miss Potter's Sock Club, and this is the second release on the pattern uh, called Peter by Kay Jones uh, of the Bakery Bears. And um, yes, yeah, so that is a nice pattern too. It's a textured pattern that I will probably be knitting for the um, Jingle Bell Rock um uh yarn uh if it works out for the yarn because it's supposed to be uh good for self striping yarn and but this is like a micro striping so i'll have to see if it'll still work if if the pattern shows because i don't want to take away the beauty of the yarn uh and you know focus on the pattern uh, because it's going to be all about the yarn for me on that one uh the other is uh, another uh, pattern that I picked up uh, when there was um, 
a promo code that was offered on Instagram by Boylan Knits and I believe there was somebody else but I, there was this one pattern I've been eyeing for a long time and just not uh, uh, sure if I would be um, up to knitting it and so when that promo code was given I thought you know why not if it, anything else it, it's a great pattern that I could have in my la library and knit it later it is the cardamom coffee hat by boy uh, by Caitlin Hunter and it is a lovely pattern and it was totally inspired uh, by this recent podcast that I watched and she is fairly new and um, I think her podcast is called Vicariously Knitting and uh, I've watched, she had out four episodes at the time and I, I binge watched them and you know, I'm up to speed with it. Um, uh, yes, so she seems to uh, live vicariously uh, in her knitting through other people's, you know, uh, knitting or patterns and things like that. And I see myself doing that a lot. I, I, I gauge things by why, what others do before I actually delve into um, the pattern myself. And so I kind of vicariously live through it for a bit and so yeah I, I could relate on that level I guess so yes I think that's a wrap I know I've been talking for a very long time even though I thought I was going pretty fast but uh, thank you very very much for watching if you have been with me till the very end I do appreciate this and uh, don't forget to check out the Ravelry group I would say give me about a day um, and I will set up that um, thread on Ravelry for the October giveaway uh, which will probably now be called October November giveaway and I will um, draw on the 15th of November or around there whenever my next podcast is I guess if you've been active on the back to school Cal you want to just uh, keep up with the commenting and updating what you've been doing and uh, just out of the comments on uh, Ravelry on the back to skill school uh, thread there is only one thread right now I will draw a, a prize winner for the midterms um, that will be on October the 31st so I think I've covered everything and uh, thank you very very much for watching and I hope you are doing all the knitting that you can and you know just spending all that time crafting and having all the time to do all the lovely things that you would like to so until next time happy knitting bye bye